Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather coming at you with another video. In this update, we're going to be talking about the major pattern change that's on the table for the second half of January. Talking about the cold making the transition from the west to the central part of the United States, to the east, and then eventually to the southeast by the end of the month. So before I do get started, if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload about five videos a week to keep you updated. All right, so let's get started. So here, let's first of all, let's talk about, talk about the uh, teleconnections. And this kind of basically tells a story with the Pacific North Atlantic. All the cold has been centered in the West and you can see how this is off the, you know, dropped off a cliff here <laughs> with um, it going sharply negative. And that's indicative with all the cold weather and the West Coast of the United States and all the warm weather in the Northeast uh, United States. But as you can see by mid month, it slowly makes that transition to positive by the 20th and then eventually, you know, more positive by the end of the month. And if you can look at the, uh, the latest EPO, the East Pacific Oscillation kind of tells the opposite story where it makes that transition from the cold from the West, eventually going neutral to the central part of the United States, and then eventually going negative after the 20th of the month getting into the eastern part of the United States and then going solidly negative, eventually filtered in to the southeastern part of the United States. All right, so if you can take a look at the latest uh, NOAA map and it kind of tells the story too, they've been slowly progressing their temperatures downward with every single update. So this is their latest six to 10 updated today and it kind of shows you the, the cold predominantly and the northwestern part of the United States with the, the above normal temperatures hanging on in the south and the southeast. But then if you take a look at the latest eight to 14 day outlook by the 19th of the 20th month, we've got a cold pattern setting in for the central and eastern part of the United States and then eventually the southeastern part of the United States. If you take a look at the MJO and that tells a story as well. So we're basically in prime time phase four right now. You can't get a warmer signal uh, for the East Coast and you can't get a colder signal for the West Coast. So that's the extreme temperatures that we're seeing, you know, 20 to 30 degrees below normal into the Northwest and 20 to, 30, 20 to 30 degrees above normal in the Northeast. But you can kind of see that making that slowly trans transition into phase five and then eventually phase six, and these are your warmer phases, but by, by after the 20th of the month, it goes into a colder phase, phase seven, and that will be indicative of the temperatures that I'll be showing you later on. Now, here's the overall temperatures currently right now. And so it, I know Boston today hit 70 degrees. It was their, what, third all-time warmest temperature in the last 140 years. That so just kind of shows you how far above normal these temperatures are but the extremes too. So you see that 37 in Dallas. Last night we dealt with all kind of tornado warnings. I was live on my Facebook page locally because I live in Dallas here, my uh, Pal Ponder on Weather fam uh, Facebook page. Uh, we dealt with all kind of tornado warnings last night. And then this morning we had a slow, uh, uh, some snow coming in. So we, Dallas uh, DFW broke its snowless streak. It has not snowed in Dallas Fort Worth for. In three years, we haven't had any measurable snow since January 10, 2017, and that was broken uh, this morning. So a lot of people got out and enjoyed the, the first uh, snowflakes they've seen in several years. And even now, it's only 37 degrees. So we'll have another freeze tonight, but you can kind of see where, the, like I said, the extreme temperatures of well above normal and well below normal in the Northwest. Now, here's some of the height anomalies. Of what's happening right now you can see the major major cold pattern you know again major cold in the northwest and extreme temperatures in the in the in the in the in the northeast but over the next 10 days it makes a complete 180 where we got that blocking pattern hit coming in and we've got a very cold signal in about 10 days from now where i think we're going to be having a pretty major snowstorm that's coming up for you guys around the 19th or 20th of the month along the uh, eastern seaboard in the northeast so i'll be talking a lot more about that 
if you take a look at the uh, the overall temperatures and where it's going right now, and this is the latest uh, CVS uh, V2 model, and again, shows you those extreme temperatures of 20 to 30 degrees below normal and 20 degree ab above normal over the next five days, okay? But you can see a kind of a slow transition. By the 16th, we start to see that slow transition of the pattern breaking down and now we're starting to get those colder temperatures starting to filter in in the northern part of the United States and eventually into the Northeast. But if you take it out another frame, by 10 days from now, it really starts to lock in and it's really honing in on a major snowstorm over, over the Northeast by the 19th, 20th, 21st of the month where some of these uh, anomaly means are, you know, eight to six to eight degrees below average and these are the average highs between the average high and the average low so um and and pretty and all these uh, blue blue temperatures represent uh three four five degrees uh below normal and this goes all the way down into texas all the way down to the deep south even in parts of florida but if we take it out another frame it actually extends it even further by the 26th of the month and this is the last five days of the month Again, takes those colder temperatures all the way down to the deep south, and now it's reaching all the way to the coast, to the coastline, into parts of South Carolina, in Georgia, in Alabama, and Mississippi, even into Louisiana. And again, that colder pattern locking in for the for the northeast. But on the flip side, now you see the warmer temperatures uh, taking over in the northwest, where they're going to be seeing above normal temperatures by the end of the month. But if we take it out another frame, and this gets you into the first week or two in February, the pattern really starts to lock in. Now we're starting to see that overall blocking pattern of what indicative of a negative NAO. And now we're starting to see the, uh, uh, you know, these colder, pat colder temperatures really settling in for an extended period of time and, and well below normal for the northern, northern half of the United States. And if we take it out another frame, even by the middle of February, Again, that blocking pattern is really setting in stone now, and you can see that cross polar flow zone really locking in now and funneling in that cold, uh, colder air deep into the United States, well down to the south, well into Texas, and even in the heart of the country of you know Iowa, uh, you know Illinois and Indiana. So you know, a lot of you guys have been missing out on a lot of winter this year, and so this is starting to show signs that the pattern that I've been thinking about what's going to happen is really kind of setting in stone. And so real winter really going to start by, by January 20th and kind of really lock itself in as we go deeper into the second half of winter. If we take a look at the, the latest uh, precipitation models, and this is over the next two weeks, it kind of gives you an idea of how much you know, moisture we have to work with. And you can see a pretty abundant amount of moisture well down to the south and well up the east coast so a lot of moisture to play with over the next uh, 16 days and so what does that mean in terms of snowfall so don't you know don't take this in stone because this is a 16 day outlook but it just kind of goes to show you that once we kind of get those colder temperatures really settling in every three to four days we'll have a cold front and as we get these overrunning conditions with ab abundant moisture in the atmosphere we could be setting up for more snow chances all the way down to the deep south, well into Texas, all the way into Arkansas and Kentucky and Tennessee and parts of the Carolinas where you just haven't seen any snow chances this, this, as of yet. But after the 20th of the month, I really think that that's really going to change and we'll start to getting some of those snow chances all the way down into the deep south where you guys live. And of course, obviously, you guys in the northeast, it's showing this indicative where I'm thinking we're going to have a major uh, snowstorm coming up in about 10 days from now, around the 19th, 20th, or 21st of the month. So that kind of gives you an idea, I think, of the overall pattern over the next two weeks. We've got a lot to talk about as we only have about another five to seven more days of kind of those warmer temperatures. But then after about, you know, the 18th, 19th, especially by the 20th of the month, we're definitely going to be making that slow transition where we're just not gonna be getting those warm ups as we have been seeing as those colder temperatures really start to lock in and especially really start to lock in as we go into February. So I, uh, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Be sure to like this uh, video 
and definitely subscribe to my channel and catch me in the next video where I protect you before and after the storm.